So this question is a diagram question. I call any question that provides visual input, I call it a diagram question. Um, so the rule with diagram questions is that we label that diagram with any given information and then also see if there's any other relevant information that we may use in our labeling that help us get to the correct answer. So let's start reading this and see how we can label the diagram. So the question says in parallel in parallelogram A, B, C, D below, AC is a diagonal. So first of all, we're told it's a parallelogram. So I'm going to just put my parallel symbols in here so that I visually remember that if it becomes important later on. Second of all, I'm told that AC is a diagonal. Um, so that's good to know, nothing really to label there. The measure of angle ABC is 40. So we see that here, we see the 40 there. And the measure of angle ACD is 57. So we also see that measured there. Uh, what is the measure of angle CAD? So we also see that with the question mark here. So the only bit of information that's been provided here that we haven't really been able to extract more information from as of yet is the fact that this is a parallelogram and this diagonal. So let's think about parallelograms, right? So parallelogram has opposite sides that are parallel, but on this test, anytime I see two lines that are parallel, I should think about my parallel line and transversal angle relationships, like alternate interior, same side interior. Let's give you some examples, right? So if I have two parallel lines and a transversal that goes through like this, then I know that these two angles are same side interior and they are um, supplementary. I would know that, let's see, race, or use a different color. I would know that these two angles are equal to each other because they're vertical, which really has nothing to do with parallel lines, but you know that may be useful to know. I would know that these two angles here are congruent because of alternate interior angles. I would also know that this angle here and this angle here are congruent because of corresponding angles. So what I wanna look for in this parallelogram is do I have any angle relationships that I should be aware of? And it looks like I do. So using red, if I look at this parallel line and this parallel line, and I say, well, I have this angle here, oh, and this transversal, right? Then this angle here and this total angle here should be equal to 180, right? These are same side interior angles. So if I call this X, I can say, well, 40 plus 57 plus X must be equal to 180 because those two angles are supplementary. So I'd have 97 plus X equals 180. Subtract 97 from both sides and go to my calculator just to make sure that I'm doing my math correctly. So 180 minus 97 is 83, so I get x equals 83. And now I know, and just to erase this so we can see it clearly, now I know that this is 83. Now how is that useful for me? Well, if I then focus my attention on these parallel lines, right? So I have this parallel to this. Is that going to help me at all? Well, I like to sometimes extend my lines to see if it's useful. So if I extend these lines, and then if I extend this diagonal and say, well, that's my transversal, and then I can see a little bit more clearly that this 83 is alternate interior to the question marked angle. Um, and if you remember alternate interior, you'll remember that those angles are congruent meaning that this angle here is also 83, and therefore the answer is choice D. Now, there is another way to kind of narrow this down if you don't remember all these rules, and that is if we have a diagram, that means things should kind of look the way you'd expect them to look. Now, what I mean by that is if this is the angle we're trying to find, and we know that this angle here is 40, we can pretty easily see that this angle here is bigger than this angle here, right? So this angle must be larger than 40. 
So A would be crossed out. And then if we know that a right angle looks like this, right, and we know that this angle here is less than 90, then we know that E would have to be crossed out. And if we keep going with this train of thought, we can narrow it down. I'm not going to say you can get to the exact answer, but I would say we can narrow it down and say, well, if this, again, so we can see clearly, if I know that this is 57, you know, this angle here does look bigger than that to me, at least, maybe not to you, but this angle looks larger than that 57. And also, we're not told that these sides are congruent, which is the only way in which we'd have equal angles down here. So that's another reason why choice B would be gone. And then I think you end up with a 50-50 here between C and D and not really being able to determine between 77 and 83. Those are very close and visually imperceptible to be able to tell the difference. But you know, the truth is there's a lot of rules here. I think you should remember them. So same side, interior, right? So this is for your review, same side interior, corresponding angles and alternate interior angles are the, um, the most common types of angles that we're going to see when it comes to parallel lines, right? So if you don't know that, we use this kind of eyeball test method and at least narrow it down and hope for the best out of those, out of those two. If you do know these, then we just use the math that you saw earlier in the video.